write the best within the storm. Some of the songs that have had the biggest effect for me are the songs I was nervous while writing. They can't write good music because they're not going through anything. If you're actually doing this on a high level, you can't just wait for trauma. That's like rappers thinking they actually got to get shot at to be a rapper. But no one talks about like friendship breakups. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing that song and being like, I was like, oh no my. one's ever said that shit before. I and everybody, I everybody in LA, in when you school. heard that song, it hurt. You was like, damn. I, I said, it's nothing to me. Ain't new to the ring. I son anybody who want it with me. The stupidity. If it's I and it's you, wouldn't one of these things is losing to me. Who could it be? Who could it be? Will it be you? Indubitably. Alright, uh, so I have a question. So um I'm always fascinated when I talk to different people about the creative process. Um one of the things that I always like, I'm like, oh word? Um mm -hmm. is a lot of artists talk about how they can't write good music because they're not going through anything. You know, there's oh, no God. like present conflict or, yes. you know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm always fascinated by that because that's not, you know, necessarily like a prerequisite for me being inspired to create or anything. Right. But I'm curious to know if you guys um, are more hindsight creators. So you create when you're out of the storm or are you in the moment creator? So like I'm going through the storm and I need to express what I'm feeling in the storm. I love this question because it is something, it's almost like the equivalent of being like, um, you know, uh, a method actor or something. Like, are mm. you going to actually put yourself through the pains and toils of the character that you're in so that you can be more in the character? Or are you just going to like, you know, act, um, <laughs> which is what you're getting paid so we, to do. We so, know you know, uh, I am a fan of both to a degree. I never want to rely on actually having to experience trauma to create art that is insane like my childhood was crazy i went through some stuff so it's like trauma is not fun or cute or anything like that so it's like no one of the goals of you know becoming a great songwriter or creator in general is being able to not only take your own experiences but other people's experiences and making storylines and creating something something that wasn't necessarily there now of course if you're able to draw from your own experiences, absolutely do that. But I feel like, um, I don't know, sometimes I wonder if certain artists, and I'll say it, you know, God bless her and everything. Like, sometimes I wonder if, like, a Summer Walker, is she maybe subconsciously putting herself in not great situations because... Look, it's hard to tell somebody if after they made $5 million doing something to stop doing the thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I was cleaning houses. Now I'm not. I just, you know, use my pain to make my gain. And so, like, mm -hmm. is it is it this weird self-fulfilling prophecy? Like, could you write sad or moody songs and be happy? I don't think that everybody believes that they can, but I'm not going to have a miserable existence just for some money. I'm going to live great. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I mean, again, life is going to happen regardless. Like, right. you, gonna, you ain't going to escape any of the stuff from life and everything. But, nah, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to just have, be horrible. I'm not to talk too long on this, sorry, but um, with Billie Eilish, something that she did. So her mom was an actor and everything. And so her mom would make her and her brother, um, Phineas, like make up stories when they were kids right. mm -hmm. and stuff. And so like when she got into songwriting, a lot of the stuff that people think is about her, she's like, these are just characters I created. I ain't going through this. Right, I mean, yeah. sometimes it is about right. her own mm -hmm. personal experience and she's able to put that in line. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But if you are a moodier writer and everything, you're setting yourself up for trauma. I'm yeah. not trying to live... What? That's like rappers thinking they actually got to get shot at to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. All right. If you get shot, I mean, then it which, works. It yeah, there was a time. There was a time. Bullets was be a working. Time. Bullets be working yeah. sometimes. So you might want to not do that. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I mean, that's kind of that, that that Taylor Swift stuff. You know, That's what I thought Calvin was going to say. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, use it. Because that's what, I mean, that's at least that's what people like accuse her of doing, I should say. When it comes to that, I, I would say like, I don't think she's intentionally sabotaging relationships. I mean, but I mean, she also could just be maybe a difficult person to be in, but I don't know all her stuff. I'm not going to act like I know everything and I'm a little too close to be talking about it. Actually, I shouldn't even be saying much, <laughs> but, um, but on, I just think I personally can, I, I can write the best within the storm. Mm. Ooh, um, okay. Outside of the storm, at least that's what I'm told. 
Like, at least I've been told that. Kofi told me that, like, when stuff happens to me, I could just, I, I vent that way. That, that's know? what I was going to guess for you. I was going to be like, yeah, you're in the storm, right? Yeah, I'm in the storm. Like, it's, it's happening to me. I know it now. It's not like I can't do it retroactively. I think I just have no interest. Because mm. sometimes I feel like some things happen to me that I consider so bad, I don't even want to relive it to make the song. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's you know, that's like the, yeah. you know, and I'm like, at, and I, I could be, you know, stifling my craft or my career by not putting myself back into those positions or not putting my putting my mind back into those scenes to really understand and maybe put out some gold. But because I related to something so terrible. And I use the music as a coping mechanism, not necessarily something I was trying to accomplish to make a good song. It's just like going back to it. It's like all those songs that I wrote, even if they put us in another level, got us some success or something like that. I don't listen to them now. Yeah. I don't, yeah, even, I don't you think know, you have to do that. I don't that. even listen to them now. And I'm like, and it's just only because I know where I was when I so I did it. And That's I can't a, not think about it. There are some. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I can't not think about it during it. I mean, I, I'm, you know, emotionally secure at this point to just be like, yeah, it was a song I wrote this time because shit happened. But I don't have the desire to be like, that's on fire. Let me listen to it again. I'm like, oh yeah, that was, that was a, that that's was a time. interesting. That's no. a whole another cut topic, which is like <laughs> the cringy ones are oftentimes the ones that like, oh, I was about to say that. So I'm glad you, no, it's like, I would say some of the songs that have had the biggest effect for me are the songs I was nervous while writing. Yeah. I was like, mm. I was like, oh man, I'm really about to say this. Cause it's like, it comes from a vulnerable place, mm -hmm. a place that kind of cuts through. What I love about music is like, somebody said it was like, um, I might be, I'm paraphrasing this wrong, but it was like, it's one of the few things to where you, you don't have to give like mental permission for it to affect you. Mm -hmm. It's like, it can just like, you could just be minding your own business in here. Man, I was driving through uh, Nashville and there was a song that came on and it was, it wasn't that it was something I had heard before, but it was the way that they said it. I was like, nobody has said it like this. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely, I could attribute this to several things and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it was like, the lyric was, I don't miss you. I just fantasize about you being someone who loved me. I was like, damn. Mm -hmm. I was like, that is a genius lyric. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I yeah. was like, golly. Yeah. I like had to go to Spotify, shazammed it. I'm like, ooh, ooh, that <laughs> stuff. But the artist was really good. Um, I'll probably look up his name and like say what it was because that's disrespectful. But you yeah. know, mm. I, I like what you said, like, you know, not always going back to those songs. And I feel like it is this awesome emotional coping mechanism to get it out. Mm -hmm. And if you can get it out and it maybe helps somebody or helps your own career, that's great. But it also, man, it's crazy when you're an artist. Imagine, like, because I think Frank Ocean talks about this, like, having to sing songs that, like, he actually was feeling on a regular basis for other people. It's like, yeah. that might be one of the reasons we don't see him perform a lot. Mm. And that also might be one of the reasons why his stuff has such a cult-like effect because it comes from a real place that's vulnerable. Man, yeah. you, he, that I mean, makes and a that lot just of blew sense. it open up to my mind, too, because, like... He's like, no, I'm in pain when I sing this. Like, <laughs> yo. That's interesting. Jeez. I'm a happily... Married man, <laughs> of course. Amen. Just, just, just want to let people know that. Yeah, because everybody yeah, has about to say some messy shit. We're no, no, I say. just, <laughs> I just want her to, you know, because she probably upstairs. Listen, I'm like, you know, I am, mm -hmm. but I also realize that's why I don't write a lot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too happy? So fascinating, this nigga. Happy? I, I, no, I told, I, I've told her that before. I was just like, I got a lot of shit to write about. Like, yeah. you know, you know, we don't have like have those problems that I had that I needed to like put out, you know, yeah. on, in song form I think, to get through it. And then like, and anything that I would or can like just, you know, talk about, like just the skill wise I could talk about, I, I'm not putting my business out there. Well, yeah, I, that's think, fair. I think, I think <laughs> that it's, I think it's a matter of digging deeper though. I will mm -hmm. say that. Right. Cause like, there's always conflict. Like, conflict is inevitable. Yeah, conflict, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's not always the obvious, right? Like, we all love to write about the heartbreak. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we know that somewhere, you know, someone is going through a heartbreak. Yeah. Or, you know, like, there are sort of the obvious, but, like, I think when you start writing about the nuances of, of relationships, it's like you open up a whole... Uh, I, I like the nuances. Yeah. I, I yeah. like the nuances. The thing is, I wish... I didn't take advantage of that during, like, post relationships pre-marriage situation which, yeah. which, which it would have been 
fine. I mean, yeah. to be honest, I can write about them now, write, write about them now, and she, you know, my wife wouldn't care at all because obviously she, she knows their songs or whatever. I just wonder how I will be able to channel that now mm-hmm. in hindsight and knowing that I don't even know if I fully processed that back then. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, that might be a, mm-hmm. that might be something that fuels it. Like you kind of uncovering that. Like, thankfully, I mean, un- thankfully and not thankfully, um, the internet is a great source of pain and trauma. So you don't even have to like <laughs> imagine it for yourself. You could just read all these horrible, we were talking about that earlier. I'm not going to go into it, but like Twitter or anything like this. And like people are miserable and having a miserable time. So you don't even have to experience it for yourself. You can just like, kind of like, literally get in the mode and you do this anyway mm-hmm. putting yourself in the character of this person in the song like how they feel and like people you know they got paragraphs of pain online so you can just read their stories be inspired like wow okay this person going through this thing reddit is good for that too mm-hmm. they have like long form stories about stuff that happened and whatnot if something is interesting and like strikes your fan so again there's a million ways one your imagination that's a muscle you do got to mm-hmm. work that and everything after we're not kids anymore but then there's a lot of source material from Reddit and people just spilling their guts online. So you could really just read it, find one that strikes your fancy. And maybe it, maybe it just enough reminds you about a thing to where you have, you're like, ooh, this is interesting to me. Right. You know, I would say that there's no, when I'm in the creative process, I don't do good and bad. I just like, is this interesting? Yeah. You know? I, I mean, speaking on that, I mean, I always want to write about a lot of different nuances now that you think about it. Because like that, when you say that, I would have liked to write about like when I was in college and I was dating and I wasn't in relationships, when I got into relationships, it was always the woman's doing. Mm. And because I never knew or picked up on a woman being interested in me romantically. Mm. Yeah. We were just friends in my mind. And then we just became closer friends and then yeah. closer friends. Because the thing is, I also had a lot of female friends that were close. Like I had like best friends, like shout out to Amanda. And Jesse, they they were girls that were like very close friends of mine. Yeah. So I categorized all these other women in there, and you know it would just change. And then I was I, I wanted to write stuff like that. I wanted to be like, how come almost every relationship I ended up in, besides the woman I married, was started by the woman? So There's definitely a song there. This is the only yeah. relationship I started in like as an adult. Yeah. And that's the only one. <laughs> that obviously I ended up in. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, that's a great, that's, a, I could get three songs out of that. Yeah. <laughs> there's, I, there, there's so, there, there right. are, yeah, multiple angles I feel like you can come at that, but that's fire. Man, yeah. That's, that's dope. Um, so like you went from the prey to the hunter. What? Mm-hmm. You Ooh. said what? The prey Ooh. from the, the hunter. You went yeah. from the prey, prey to, to the, the hunter. hunter. I like that. Oh, the prey to the hunter. Or the yeah. prey to the predator. Oh, oh yeah. That, that sings better. <laughs> that sings better. <laughs> we in an era where that, you know what I'm saying? Pray to Predator yeah, coming soon. We in an era where that's feeling all too familiar. I got okay. some electric guitar for that. <laughs> I'm playing. Dun, but now, what was you about to say? Dun, um, oh, no, I was just going to answer the question. Huh? I asked the question, though. Huh? <laughs> I was like, You didn't answer gonna, it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would say I'm a hybrid. Um, yeah, but I, I, I do like... a little bit of both. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what he said, actually. I didn't hear it, but then I was like, <laughs> let me know. think of what Calvin probably would have <laughs> said to that. <laughs> no, you're good. But you're uh, good. I'm definitely a hybrid. I, my philosophy in general, I talk about this all the time, is just create, period, right? And I think par- yeah, yeah. partially that's survival because it's what I do for a living. So it's kind of like I can't be like, I'm not inspired today. Oh, the vibes aren't there today or whatever. So that's vibes. not everyone's story. And I, I I totally respect people who are just like, yo, I got to be going through it and I need to feel it in the I moment. I don't respect that <laughs> at all. I, I respect look down it on because you. a lot of times it really does produce great art and that's their method and, and that's what music is to them. It's a medium for them to express you what they're feeling. You are a masochist. That is you know not. Well, <laughs> that uh, is not. Well, well, here's the thing. I get what you're not saying, you, but, but like, I know how, how you feel about it because you've made points about like, not liking to work around people who need to be drunk or high to make that music. yeah that I so agree with. and I yeah. think you're putting it in the same category right kind of I mean but it's weird like I do get what you're saying like that's what I back to the thing it's like I how do I judge somebody who they had nothing and they started talking about their pain and maybe that was some sort of therapy and now they got it and so but they have more pain like pain doesn't go away especially if they don't address it but now they're maybe incentivized not to address it. That's fair. So it's no, like you're, you're, I get thing. what you mean. It's all about what music is to you. 
for some people, yeah. music is an outlet for them to express their troubles and their emotions mm -hmm. and stuff. So if that's your relationship with music, if you don't plan on being a songwriter and being in sessions and helping other people write their songs or writing for sync, then so be it. Just wait until you go through something tragic to write your album. And then, you know, that's, that's <laughs> yo, I mean, at the end of the day, that's bread you missing out on. So it's cool. But, mm -hmm. um, but for me, yeah, I, I think I lean more towards like hindsight clarity. I think I write my ideas in the storm though. You know what I'm saying? So like I'll take out my notepad and be like, oh, I'm feeling this way. I'm gonna write down how I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? Or like, oh, that was like an interesting concept right there. I'm gonna write that down. But I don't think I'll actually flesh out the song while I'm in the storm. I'll just write it for later reference. And then yeah, like when I'm in a space, notes. exactly. I'll do a voice note. Then when I'm in the state, you know, state of mind to like flesh it out, that's when I'll refer back and then I'll feel it. But then I'll also have a clarity and a perspective on it that's like, oh, I can... You know what I'm saying? Like, I can identify what's dope about this. I can identify how to communicate it in a way to where they'll receive it, all the other different things. So I, I feel like that's usually how I do it. It's like, I'll write it when I'm out of the storm, but I'll get a lot of ideas and downloads when I'm in the storm. I think that I write faster when I'm in it because I don't, I cut out all the BS. Mm. It's like me being in a more vulnerable position. And I'm a fast writer, mm. like, but... Even when I'm there, I'm just able to get to the point in a more, I don't know. It's just like, I'm not playing games with it. It's like, nah, nah, nah. Like, I don't know. It's like, if it, when you're going through trauma or just going through a hard experience, it's like, look, if this don't touch me right now, I ain't got time for it. I'm just not playing. So it's like more yeah. of a, not seriousness, but there's more of a, I'm just very more articulate with yeah. it and like quick with it. And I know exactly mm -hmm. I don't have to think about how it feels because I'm there. You're there. So I'm yeah. like, all right, yeah, I walked outside. It was hot. Boom. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's and a more accurate. You're right. And it it, it can capture the emotion better. And I, I'm not even like, again, like I said, I'm a hybrid because there. I feel like I've mm -hmm. written some fire songs when I was in the trenches. So mm -hmm. I agree. Like there are different like, you know, nuances. I feel like I said that word a lot, but there are different <laughs> nuances that you can capture when you're there versus that hindsight doesn't provide. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you... Some might call that like a watered down thing. I feel like though, you can still channel it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the, you don't have to a, be in it to channel it. My thing you know is, what I mean? I think that as a professional artist, you have your job is to channel it. Yeah. You can't just be waiting. If you have an album release, if you're actually doing this on a high level, you can't just wait for trauma. Yeah. Like what? You gotta get stuff done. You have to go and do it. They have a session with some people. You have to. You are a, to a degree, a medium of emotion. Yeah. And you have to be able to be good at getting that, whether in season or out of season. I can't just, if I'm only writing when I feel like writing, like, no, I've, and, but also I got good at writing. I forced myself to write songs when I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And that's how I got good at writing. Like, it was this horrible track somebody sent me. Yeah. And like two people had quit trying to write for it. And when I, I was like, oh, it can't be that bad. It was that bad when I heard it. Yeah. And I was like, no. And so I just let the track play over two days. I, nothing, I would listen to nothing but that track. Yeah. And by the halfway through the second day, I was like, I started thinking of a melody. And it was like, oh, I made it work by like changing my the rhyme scheme and whatever and everything. And it worked and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. And that really broke down a wall of like, oh, I don't have to always just feel like it yeah. to do it and everything. I can just, you do, now that yeah. being said, you do know how to have, how to inspire yourself. And hopefully you're inspiring yourself in non-destructive ways. Yeah. I will say that, like, I think that it is, it can be unethical mm. to be somebody who creates trauma for yourself and other people so that you can feel inspired. Oh God, like, I feel man. like if you are one of those people who's like, yo, I need to be in the storm, then mm -hmm. I think you have to let life provide you that storm organically because, like, inevitably you will go through trauma. You know what I'm saying? You will experience conflict. Mm -hmm. And I think you should capitalize on that for real. Like, I think if you're someone like someone we mentioned who kind of like brags about how it's like I date people and break up with people so that I can write songs about it. I think that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Versus like, yeah, like if, if, you know, if you're going to be that person, be a purist for real. Like Lauren Hill ain't dropped the album since Miss Education. She dropped the Unplugged, but like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like she's a purist for real. She's like, that's yeah. where I was at. I dropped it and I didn't need to do the whole didn't, didn't label good, rushing man. me to drop an album and I need to start, you know, fabricating creativity. Like she was really true to it. So if you're going to be that person, be true to it is my thought. But otherwise, I agree. Learn how to channel it. Learn how to like, you know, like look at other people's experiences and Yeah. I just want to know, like, as, you know, as a sync writer, can you just write songs about things that m people might not have even thought of as important? 
yeah. that they all go through. Or that like isn't like a super prominent subject matter in traditional pop music. Is that kind of what you're saying too? Like something that people haven't even spoken on for real? Like people, yeah, people don't even speak on it. I mean, like there's yeah. like, I mean, like, can you write like a dramatic Billy Eilish situation about late night scrolling? Like you're just scrolling through social media and then absolutely. Just, I think so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You're like, yeah. yeah. Like that was um Alyssa Cara here. Alessia Carr is a great example. I, that's actually somebody who I was going to say about? second. That, like, that song, but like for me that touched song, my whole soul. Yo, shout, and I, I'm pretty sure Sebastian Cole was a co writer on that, who's one of my favorite writers. But mm -hmm. he, um, yeah, that whole song is a song about being at a party and feeling awkward. Like, why am I here? I don't even enjoy this, but I'm supposed to pretend like I enjoy this. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing that song and being like, I was like, oh no my. one's ever said that shit before. I know, and I everybody in LA, in when you school. heard that song, it hurt. You was like, damn. I remember so being in high school so and being singing. like, yo, or I'm sorry, being out of high school and being like, yo, I wish I had this song in high school because like, I never realized that other people felt that way. You so know I'm, a, I'm, a, I, here's the thing. Yeah. I'm going to be a small... I'm an outlier in this situation only because of the schools I went to. But so mm -hmm. when I heard that song, I someone sung a song just like that in, in high school for oh, a talent right. show. And okay, she, but I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, she definitely brought it to... I, I never no, no, thought no. of writing a song about that. But here's the thing, honest. like, I didn't... I never even considered even that time was the first time I heard it, but I, now that I think about it, I, you don't hear it a lot. But when I heard... The Alessa Cara song, I was just like, I'd never thought of it as something new, only because I feel like I went to schools with a lot of depressed white girls. Mm. That's funny. But, and I'm not but like, like to do it like with like a hip hop cadence. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, like, it wasn't like, done that way. I think that's it not, was, but uh, the genre actually matters here, right? Because yeah. I think it speaks to the, the reason I never thought to write a song about that is because that wouldn't be cool it's, to say. Yeah, yeah. Like, I couldn't yeah, say it was, that it was, on it was my a, medium and have niggas bumping it. Like, yeah, man, look, I was at the party and I was feeling uncomfortable yeah. and insecure uh, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Insecurity yeah. is. No, it was definitely is, a counter. <laughs> you it was kind of insecurity. It was definitely kind of a counter culture type of thing yeah but it was it spoke to a, a very real place that a lot of people related to yeah. especially if you were in entertainment you definitely feel like what am i doing like yeah. you know you be you find yourself in some odd room sometimes and it's just like oh well this is normal this is what i want right and so i have to be here right yeah. and everything and it's just like it doesn't always you don't even like consider this. that there's like another possibility because it's just so ingrained in like, you. Oh, like this, this is, is how what? you got to move to get where you want to go. Yeah. I mean, of course, after you've been in it for a while, you kind of realize like, oh, no, nah, that was just a weird room. Or there's other rooms and there's other ways to do stuff and everything. But it's still taboo, first, though. You don't oh, necessarily yeah. speak up about it. You know, like, say, oh, you I mean, can't just clown everything. Like, I always like wonder, like, I have a lot of respect for a lot of people. What if you were hanging out with somebody you have a lot of respect? Maybe you're doing music or entertainment because of this person and you're hanging out at a party and something weird happens. This is another question. Do you call them on it like you would for any other person? Mm. Or do you just kind of go along to get along? Like some just weird, out of the ordinary. Yeah. Not maybe like, you know, tragic or, or or like hurtful, but just something on the cusp or something you're not sure about. Like, you know, if one of y'all just like farted, I'd be like, hey, man, chill. Yeah. But if you were sitting down and Michael Jackson here and he just farted, you might just... Act like you didn't hear it. <laughs> you just yeah. let him go. Another example of sync. I heard this song. I was watching All American. There was this song that played. Um, it was called How to Lose a Friend. Mm. Which already subject matter wise was like, yo, I, I haven't. I personally haven't heard that song before. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember hearing it and being like, yo, this is wild. And the, and the lyrics were like, um, can I say lyrics actually on yeah. the podcast? Okay. Man, golly, it was bro. like, it's somebody tell me how it's supposed to end. How do we go from talking every day to will we ever speak speak again? Um, when someone you knew so well, so well still exists, but it's somebody else. Somebody tell me how it's supposed to end. How to lose a friend. That's deep. Yeah, yeah and I was just like, Love that. wait a minute. <laughs> I yeah. was like, I've never heard that song written before. You hear breakup song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in terms of romantic relationships, but no one talks about like friendship breakups. And it was done in a way, bro, I might have shed a thug tear, bro. Yeah. Oh, um, it, I mean, are we at the point where you, we can't get these new topics unless no, no, no. someone's going through it? Or or, like, or do you actually think people are sitting in rooms like, what hasn't been discussed? I think both can happen. Yeah. I think that you can, I think it's a combination of both logic and emotion, right? So you can mm -hmm. logically go, what do I want to talk about? And then once you decide on a subject matter, you can start like, how does that feel? 
huh, what, how would I feel if I were that person in that situation? Oh, have I been through anything like that? Do I know anybody who, you know, relates to that? Like, I think it can start as logic and then you can say, okay, how do we connect to this emotionally? Yeah, you know? I, I, I think that if you have as your goal the objective of connecting with a human being, and you're only going to be able to do that by having some sort of vulnerability and looking inside yourself and pulling out something that maybe hasn't been pulled out. If that's your goal and objective, then it has to be your goal and objective. And yeah. if you're not willing to do that, then it's just like, you know, you're going to maybe just get the same results that everybody else, or maybe not even those. If you're just trying to do this guarded material that's mm -hmm. very calculated and very predictable to a certain degree, when the human experience is just a real thing, you could just literally just say exactly how you feel Think about it and whatnot. Oh, speaking of which, that song that I mentioned earlier was called I Don't Miss You by J.P. Sachs. Great song. Hmm. Okay, Great Sachs. song. Yeah, J.P. Sachs. So in conclusion. So, yeah, yeah I, th yeah. I think to answer your question, it, it's it's a combo of both. You can come up with something and be like, okay. It's like, it's like in songwriting class, a lot of times they'll say, write from the perspective of an inanimate object. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Write a song. And it's like a metaphorical song, but it's like, if I'm writing from the perspective of a wall, okay, how does a wall feel? You know what right. I'm saying? What yeah. does a wall right. see? Nas right. had you know a great what I'm saying? Like, how the... would I feel if I had to be a wall? Nas you know had, what I'm Nas saying? Nas had a great song about the perspective of a gun. It's one of his yeah. best songs. Yeah. Whatnot. Like, oh, we were just talking about like, hey, how he came to be and how he sees lives being taken and everything like that. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. So, great writing know, exercise. It's amazing. Well, my name is Calvin II. And I'm from Detroit. What, what, what do you what is your profession, Calvin? Um, <laughs> as an actor and musician. Yeah. As an actor and musician. Um, yes, say. Yeah, yes, sir. As an actor I say, yes, say. <laughs> are you say. are you an actor on strike? Uh, uh, not oh. voiceover wise. Oh. Not voiceover wise. Whoa there. Voiceover isn't affected by the strike, so I'm doing good. Thank you, guys. All right. Oh, you ruined the drama. Peace till next time. <laughs> <laughs>